And last year in the second half, he was as bad as you possibly can be. He was terrible. And now he's hurt in spring training. They got a lot of problems. Uh, they big, you know, a lot of problems. Their pitching stinks. Hi, everybody. Christian the Bad Dog Russo. And I'm around there for you. You know what I'm listening to? WBOF 88.5 on the FM dial. Listen all the time. I'm sure he does. <laughs> <laughs> have you have you caught caught uh, Mad Dog on on his satellite? No, I, I know he's there, but uh, yeah. I hear the ads, but I've never uh, listened. Yeah, I, I haven't heard him either. But uh, he listens to uh, WVUF all the time, so that's oh, good. good. That's good news. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh well, I think he's wasn't he from Fordham? Didn't he graduate? Yeah, from Yeah, I think so. I think Michael K went there, or you know, they're they're either from Syracuse or Fordham. Well, I think he went to Florida. Oh, I okay. remember. Yeah. And Francesca St. John's, yeah. Yeah. And, and you, Fairfield University. <laughs> yeah, but but at that time it was a lot different than it is today. <laughs> yeah, that's right. What was the class about a couple? Hey, you know what's funny? I walked in the alumni relations uh, department a couple weeks ago, and right on the table was the class of uh, 63 yearbook right on the table there. Oh, really? Yeah. Uh, I, I, well, I'm not even sure I would be in it. <laughs> yeah, I was there. <laughs> So, so uh, the familiar voice you hear is my dad, Bill Kelly, who's also an esteemed horse handicapper and always joins us to uh, preview the Triple Crown events and Breeders' Cup and uh, hopefully this summer Saratoga and Del Mar. And uh, he, he's been busy, as always, handicapping uh, this tricky field. And, uh, you know, is your brain spinning yet or, or just starting to get crazy? Well, between all the horses that are dropping out uh, in, and the fact that... Uh, this is really a slow bunch. I, mean, I, don't, I don't care how you, how you calculate speed. This is a slow bunch of horses. <laughs> yeah, you know, I'm, lo I'm looking at some of these the, the figures, and, you know, even horses that they have who are, should be, you know, one in the lead and, and you know, just off, they're, they're not even running great speed figures, right? No, no. And, and uh, one of the things in a, in a race like that, of course, every horse in the race has never gone um, uh, you know, 10 furlongs, so uh, no, no matter how they're bred or whatever, they, <laughs> there, there's a question mark and all 20 that'll be in the race that they can get that distance uh, in, uh, you know, the, in a time that can win, you know, that, that's the whole point. Right, and right. when you look at the closing time, the last quarter, the last uh, uh, part of the race, from the three quarters to the finish, uh, these horses, none of these horses are uh, are very uh, very fast. You know, they always say, "Well, if you can run a uh, a furlong in a, what under twelve seconds, you're a you're a uh, a good class horse." Well, these horses are um, basically, uh, you know, they they can't do it, or they haven't done it so far. Let's put it that way. Mm -hmm. uh, and I think the telling, the most telling. Uh, comment on the whole race um, about the quality of the horses that are in it is the fact that Pletch is going to put a, a, a filly in there. Yeah, so uh, th let's look at Devil May Care, who, who just announced today won't be entered for the Oaks, but will be entered solely for the Kentucky Derby. Mm -hmm. w what do you make of her chances? Uh, Joe, I, I really don't know. I, I look, you know, um, because, you know, you really haven't... Uh, calculated up until the last few days that uh, I don't even have past performances for her. I looked at her race in the Breeders' Cup. She was in the Breeders' Cup uh, uh, two-year-old. Mm -hmm. And uh, and she really didn't do anything. I think she finished seventh or whatever it was in the back. Um, she's uh, come from behind her, you know. Mm -hmm. And um, um, She's apparently not very big. So, uh, I don't know. I mean, the fact that, that she's in the race or that uh, Pletcher would even consider in her, and the ownership would even consider running her instead of running her in the Oaks uh, is more of an indictment on the, on the Colts that are there than uh, how good she is, I think. Now, do you give any credence to, let's say, uh, you know, Devil May Care, whose jockey hasn't been announced, uh, a jockey who will ride a horse for the first time in this big race? Well, uh, apparently it's going to be Johnny B. Oh, okay, that's right, because that's Andrea, yeah. Yeah. Okay, so a regular rider will be there. Yeah, so, I mean, you know, he's he's going to be uh, be able to ride her. 
And and look at you know Pletcher. Pletcher's done this before, didn't? Wasn't it his horse that won the Belmont uh, against Curlin? And uh, yeah, that's right. Yeah. Uh, so and then I mean you know the tragedy that happened with eight bells. Um, that was, uh, I mean, the fact that she was in that race was really um, an indictment on the horses that were in there. I, that was was that Barbaro or Big Brown? I can't remember. Barbaro, I guess. Barbaro, yeah. Yeah. Uh, I mean, that was the only horse, apparently, that they they feared in the whole race. Uh, so, uh, I mean, they wouldn't stick a filly in there unless they thought that uh, she had a good shot. Right, and the, and the horse has been running well uh, in training at, at uh, yeah. Churchill Downs. I'm looking at the yesterday's workout, and or two days ago, and, you know, ran, ran a nice figure, five furlongs in the slop. Mm-hmm. So... We'll, we'll have to I, I would think that uh, she she's obviously ready to run uh, right now, uh, and her running style should be uh, uh, a factor because when you look at the twenty horses that are in there, and I'm assuming that uh, Jackson Ben gets in now with uh, the uh, rule being uh, uh, withdrawn, mm-hmm. uh, that uh, of the twenty horses that are running, uh, fourteen of the twenty are either need the lead or need to be very close to the lead to be effective. <laughs> that only leaves eight horses to be uh, coming from behind. So <laughs> it so, doesn't leave a lot of room for uh, for uh, mistakes, you know. Yeah, if you just tuned in, you're uh, listening to WVUF 88.5 FM at Fairfield, Connecticut, the upper room with Joe Kelly. A little later in the program, New York City punk rock band Stark will be performing live here in the studio. So... They're pretty loud. They're they're a great group, but they're loud. <laughs> and, and they've been on the show before, so. Oh uh, really? Yeah. So, uh, Bill Kelly, my dad here, great handicapper, and uh, you know our station manager Dan Grzynski, um, I, I I was telling him you're going to be on the show, and and he was the only one last year who actually made money on the Triple Crown series, and he he's uh, he's probably out there listening now, and he's going to give me his picks tomorrow. <laughs> He better wait a few days just to make sure that he knows who's going to be in it. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. Well, just yeah. dropping like flies. <laughs> right, right. So let, let, let's uh, go over some of the horses and, and um, give. First, let's uh, give. Well, you you go how you want to go with. Uh, how about how about some toss outs? Sure, toss outs. Sure, toss outs. Um, okay. Uh, I I personally have, um, you know, I. The uh, I looked at a figure and I, I, about uh, the last forty-seven Kentucky Derbies. Uh huh. The horse, uh, looking at the horses and the finish that they had in the race prior to the Kentucky Derby of the forty-seven horses, fifty-five percent won their last race prior to the Derby. Okay. Twenty-six percent. Finished no worse than second. There was eight uh, percent finished third, and seven percent finished fourth. So you can quickly with with uh, go just down the list and um, toss out anybody that didn't finish first or second, and you've covered almost eighty five percent of all <laughs> the horses that have won in the past. You right. Know? Right. Uh, and you know, so the the horses that would that would be an automatic toss out under that uh, criteria would be uh, Noble's Promise, finished fifth mm-hmm. in his last race. Um, Discreetly Mine finished fourth. Interactive finished fourth. Okay, so the those horses are 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 definite throwouts. Um, then you could. You could the horses that finished third were awesome act. Uh, he he had a little bit of a a problem in that race, so you might want to. Yeah, I, w- I was expecting a lot more from from that horse in that race, but yeah, a little. But little... he 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 bobbled at the start and got right. off to a bad uh, a bad beginning, which uh, uh, could could say. But you know, when you look at his figures, none of these horses in here. You know, I, I use the. Uh, the uh, 
the bris figures, right? Mm-hmm. The speed figure, the the actual figure doesn't really mean anything other than comparing it, you know, apples to orange. I mean, apples to apples. In other words, all the horses in the race that you're comparing are using the same figure. Um, so, so what comparison. figure? What figures are you looking for, awesome Mac, coming up short? Well, in other words, the the, the par for this for this race is 107. Mm-hmm. Uh, none of these horses have ever run 107. None. Right. Zero. Uh, the uh, the closest was uh, Jackson Ben, who ran 106 in a sprint race as a two-year-old. Long ways from that. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Right. Right. So, uh, uh, and uh, then the next highest would be uh, looking at Lucky. I think ran 102. Mm-hmm. But most of the others have all run in the 90s. So, so if you if you're seeing that many not even coming close, what's the next figures you would look for? In handicapping well, the race, see, I I listen to uh, who I have a lot of respect for, John White, who's uh, you know on HRTV uh, and commentator there, and also makes the morning line, or did make it for uh, the uh, the recent uh, Santa Anita uh, meet that just completed, and he one criteria he uses is, uh, and he's found very successful is that. He looks at the last two races that the, that each horse has run before before the uh, Kentucky Derby, and if they weren't either first or second in the stretch, and first or second at the finish in both races, he throws them out. So it has to be both. It has to be both, mm-hmm. and the reason for that is that uh, you have. To, to win this race, you need to be in the stretch. You got to be either second or first, going that last uh, eighth of a mile. Mm-hmm. And and it, it, it's amazing. You look at even the race yet last year, which was a fluke with my net bird. At the top of the stretch, he had already caught all the horses and had passed them going into the stretch. So at at the eighth pole, he was actually in front. So it, to to win this this mile and a quarter at Kentucky, you can't you can't be five or six lengths off going to the final stages of the race and win. You just can't make up that much ground. So you're saying in the in the last two prep races, first yeah. or second in, in the stretch and finish and, position first and, and the second. finish and right. the finish. Right now, looking at all the horses, the only horses that would not be tossed out under that criteria are. Line of David, who's a need to lead type, so he's you got to question whether he can he can make it. Endorsement, conveyance, mm-hmm. devil may care the the filly, and that's it. The rest all would be tossed based on that one criteria. Okay, so that you let's go through. Uh, we we can do a quick run through uh, yeah, sure. of the the field, um, and you can give your comments okay. and, and people out there who are looking for the the big score and uh, you know to start their uh, triple crown uh, experience this Saturday. I think uh, post times around six fifteen, right? More or less well, uh, on the yeah. east coast, yeah. On the east coast, yeah, something along those lines, yeah. Right. All right, American Lion who. Uh, well, let, let's let's start if you don't mind my okay. jumping in here. Let's start. The two favorites uh, are going to be probably looking at Lucky and Sydney, Sydney's Candy. Right. Okay. Both legitimate horses. There's no question about it. The, que- the problem is Sydney's Candy, which has breeding to get a mile and a quarter, has never run on dirt. There's never been a horse to to win the Kentucky Derby. That has run strictly on all weather, and, and a horse which running style needs the lead, but has. Well, I guess it, it's tough to judge the the pace. Well, he, yeah, he, he, he his on need the lead are on the lead times are are. He's just been on the front end. I'm not sure that this horse, uh, if you look in his past, you know, after the, the you know the last three, he. he 
he was basically a an early presser. In other words, a horse that would be running within three lengths of the the front runner at uh, at the half well, half mile marker. So I, I think this horse can rate, so or at so least be close up, but not out. He doesn't absolutely need the lead to win. So he also has, I guess, with your uh, stretch and final position, qualifies, right? He qualifies. The, the only, you know, I, I'm sorry, I don't know why I, I missed him uh, uh, as, as a qualifier. The only problem I see with him is he may be, he, no, as I said, uh, yeah, I have a next down there because he, he's never run on dirt. Yeah, right, right. So that the, the, the question then becomes, can he transform the, the form that he used on all weather to the dirt? It's never been done before. Now, the close, oh, go ahead. The closest that came to it was Street Sense, who uh, finished second in the uh, Bluegrass at, mm-hmm. at Keelan, but he was really a dirt horse mm-hmm. that ran that one race on all weather. So, but no one else has even come close. Now, now I have a question about the two-year-old campaign. Didn't run a two-turn race at all. Uh, in fact, didn't run a two-turn race till March 13th, Sydney's Candy. Right. How about Lack of experience for as a two-year-old for any of these horses for route. Do you, do you find that? Uh, uh, I don't. I don't personally don't think that uh, uh, two turns in this two-year-old uh, year is uh, a, a criteria. Okay. I think the fact that they have to have run in their two-year-old year is a. Uh, I mean, the percentages say all horses need to have run a a race, no matter what it is, in their two-year-old year to. To be qualified uh, uh, as a as a win potential that was broken by uh, someone recently. I, I've forgotten which which horse uh, won and didn't uh, hadn't run as a two year old. But it, it, in any event, uh, it, 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 all these horses I think qualify. I don't think any of them are, um, would be disqualified on the fact that they didn't run as a two year old. So Sydney's Candy uh, certainly can get a mile and a quarter. The breeding yeah. on on this horse is uh, outstanding. Stamina will not be a problem if he transfers his all weather um, uh, successes to dirt. And you know, and uh, it, I mean, history says it's never been done, but it doesn't mean it can't be done. But but most likely will be an underlay, right? It's definitely an underlay. Yeah, I, so. I would think that uh, you want to get paid on this, right? Not going to be. As somebody, I just heard someone on the on the radio talking about um, even it, it, you know they were talking about superfectors, and they were saying even if look looking at Lucky and uh, Sydney's Candy run one two, both favorites one two, and you get. You know, you you happen to hit the horses in the third and fourth um, um, finishing places. You will you will <laughs> have an outstanding score, even yeah. with the two favorites in there. Mm-hmm. It's the only race probably in America that would do that. You know. Um, so most likely, looking at you know somewhere around five to one, six to one, they're probably going to go off at Sydney's Candy. I would say that Sydney's Candy, if uh, it would be a decent bet at uh, at six to one or higher. Okay. Uh, looking at Lucky, it's probably going to be a three to one, um, and if he if he gets up to five to one, uh, I think he's a bet. You know, I mean, he's um, there, the one thing about this horse is you know he can run on dirt. Hey, Dad, we got we have our station manager here. Oh. Oh, he he wanted to join in. Sure. <laughs> Hi, how's it going? It's going fine. I just want I just want some uh, picks. I'm a huge uh, horse racing fan, so I just want to listen in. <laughs> You're most welcome. Yeah. <laughs> Hopefully, you'll give us some winners too. Oh, okay. yeah. I, I, that, that's Dan Grzynski, who who I, I mentioned was the only one to make a profit on the Triple Crown series. <laughs> <That's> right. <laughs> yeah. Hey, always going with the winner. Right. Yeah, I guess. <laughs> so 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 looking at uh looking at looking at Lucky, who's going to be the the favorite, right? I I would say so. Okay, and I say uh, it looks to be somewhere around three to one. Uh, if if he drifts up to five to one, then I would say he's a bet. And uh, Sydney, uh, 
Sydney's candy would be a, a bet at uh, six to one or higher. So those are, but you're looking at probably underlays on that, right? I, I would think that it uh, both will probably be underlay. Not, not, not terribly. I don't think that with the amount of the competitiveness of the of the entire field will keep the the odds somewhat reasonable. All right. So yep. those are the the two ones most likely with Escandarea mm-hmm. making the uh, being scratched. Right. Who, and rules it? out now. I oh, yeah. So so rule is uh, definitely uh, definitely out. What wasn't training well? They didn't like the way he was going, um, and um, you know they Windstar who owns that horse uh, has several others in the race. So uh, uh, I, I think they're going to save him for. Uh, the Preakness, probably. All right. We are listening to WVOF 88.5 FM in Fairfield, Connecticut. My dad, Bill Kelly, also a esteemed horse handicapper. And where will you be watching uh, the race on Saturday? Uh, at this point, it's unknown. Oh. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> yes. To be decided the day? I'm, so, I'm sorry? To be decided the day of the, day of the race? Yeah. Uh, that and the fact that I have to go back to uh, California night so <laughs> oh okay hopefully i come back here in time to see the race here otherwise i'll be uh, if i'm in california i would probably be watching it uh, at hollywood or somewhere you know so you're, st- you're still racking up the miles traveling right yeah back and forth <laughs> with, with the china trip coming up right yes i'll be going there on the 16th of may oh okay so uh let, let's get to the uh, actual the the second tier Okay. I, I shouldn't say the second tier, maybe in, in your estimation, but... Uh, well, the horses that I question, uh, um, because, one, they, they've they never run on dirt. Mm-hmm. Uh, or if they ran on dirt, they weren't successful. Uh, Interactive, Dean's Kitten, or both are, are turf horses, really. Right, right. Um, the, uh, you have to question uh, Patio, pra- uh, patio Prado. Prado. Right. Uh, whose only dirt try was horrendous, but he's apparently training well. So uh, I would throw out homeboy Chris. Uh, you know, when a horse doesn't uh, is off the length of time he is and going to try to train to go up to the race and has never gone beyond a, a mile and a sixteenth, uh, I would say he's an automatic toss. Now, now going back to Patio Prado, a toss or, or keep in the mix? I would keep in the mix, uh, certainly uh, for uh, underneath. Okay. Um, the horse that uh, that is very interesting to me is Conveyance. Okay. Again, uh, a need to lead type, but. Um, and we'll probably go under the radar, even yes. though trained by Bob Baffert, right? Yeah, I. I it, this horse is uh, is. Uh, a horse that you know could could sit right off the the other speed and then uh, take advantage at the top of the stretch. And this horse actually, I'm looking at the the Briss first in the Prime Power, right? Yeah, well, I, I didn't. Uh, yeah, I, I didn't even look at that. Right. So coming out of the the Sunland Derby, which my that bird ran in that one, right? Uh, last I think year. Last year, yeah. Yes. Yeah. Finished fourth. Right. Now, <laughs> yeah. But, yeah. I'll tell you. Joe, that, that, when you look at that race, I mean, if you were a conspiracy theorist, right, that is the race that you would point to. <laughs> well, because what, all se- day. Hmm? Oh, I, I said like 75% of the people who play the horses are conspiracy theorists. Yeah. yeah. But I mean, that all day, you know, it had been raining, it was wet, the rail was golden. Every race, I don't care where you were in the race, if you were on the rail, you were in the mix to win. Mm-hmm. In the Kentucky Derby, with 20 horses, all of those jockeys have had run in races uh, on the card before the Kentucky Derby. There was only one horse on the rail that, that mind that bird had to come out and around and get right back on the rail. Only one horse. Every other horse was out in the middle of the track. <laughs> I mean, uh, you got to say, wait a minute. <laughs> yeah, something's something's not. <laughs> Something was not right. Right. And the horse hasn't won since. That's that's right. Yeah. So, uh, you know, that was I the mean, day to shine. Yeah. 
Yeah. So I'm, I'm looking at conveyance and, and the jockey. I think it's Matt Garcia, right? Yeah, he's been really hot. Yeah, he, where, where is he from? Or he's, well, he, well, I, I, I think he's from Mexico. But I, uh, I mean, he's been riding in uh, California for quite a while, and uh, he, he's done very well with Baffert horses so far. So uh, that's right. Hey. Uh, so so uh, definitely we'll we'll be in double digits. Well into double digits, but uh, I would think he'd be well into double might be, digits. It might be worth a shot, definitely. Def- well, he, he's going to be near the front. There's mm-hmm. no question about that. Right, right. Um, Maybe pull he, a war war emblem. We would still believe. No, I don't for that. think he's going to be that close. I see. I think he. Um, the question mark with him is he, for him to win. Up to now, he's always had to be on the lead. Right. Uh, he's not going to get the lead this time. Not not with the line of David in there, uh, and uh, um, there's several others that are, you know, uh, let's see who else is there. Uh, the uh, Super Saver. Right, right. Uh, line of David. Uh, so you, you don't think uh, Burrell's going to repeat this year? This well, you know, he, uh, <laughs> did you watch any of his races over the weekend? Uh, yeah, Don, he was. He had a he had a big stakes race at won, Kentucky Derby. He won. He the opening day. He won five of the six mounts that he rode, right. and this, the other one he finished second. Mm. And most of them were on the lead. Wow! So he, I mean, you know, and and a lot of them were. He was out in the middle of the track. So I mean, you know, he, he's not. <laughs> he's not only a. Uh, uh, a jockey that comes up the rail and comes from behind. Right. right. Uh, so I mean, he's a good jockey. Yeah. You know, but like, most li- most likely will be underling just on on the name, right? You think? Um, super super saver. Super saver. He, yeah, I I would think that he's uh, he would not be favored uh, at this point. He, I mean, he's not going to be among the top. People are going to. Look at the horses that need the lead. The horses that, like Sydney's Candy, has always run near near the lead to win on his wins. Uh, Conveyance is need the lead. Uh, Super Saver is needed the lead. Uh, Line of David's needed the lead. All these horses, obviously, four horses across the track are not going to. Uh, <laughs> you're not going a mile and a quarter that way. You know? Right. Right. Uh, so you're going to have to figure out who can who can who can sit and pounce. One is, I would think, Sydney's Candy. I think will definitely be in the second tier. Mm-hmm. And uh, um, and I I, I just like uh, the fact that uh, I think Conveyance could be uh, a horse that uh, may be uh, improving to a point that uh, he'd be a factor. Now, uh, let's see. We'll go, we'll go through a few few uh, few of the horses. Some of them you already touched on, and some uh, you haven't spoken of. Uh, looking at American Lion, uh, had a great victory in Illinois Derby. Mm-hmm. Um, what do you make of this one's spot? Uh, this horse, uh, I think, can can rate a little bit, uh, like Sydney's Candy. So I would think that maybe, even though his uh, Last race was on the you know from woe to go. Right. Uh, I, I think he can sit behind uh, and still be effective. Uh, he is. Uh, let's see what. Well, he he. We disqualified him under the fact that his second race back, uh, he did not finish first. He was not in first or second in the stretch. Right. Right. So. Uh, and Le Peru's uh, been. Uh, he he's been uh, consistent with an awesome act. So maybe he. Chose this one. Oh, is that is that who's well, I mean, right? He, I haven't looked at the jockey yeah, at all. Right. Is he is he going to ride? Uh, yeah, he's going to be uh, an awesome uh, act. Yep. Oh, awesome act. Yeah. So uh, okay, so awesome act. Uh, we talked about the Wood Memorial stumbled at the break, and you know. Yeah, you, you might want to give him a pass on that one. So, um, so but he, he he's not necessarily. Uh, Lighten it up uh, at Churchill, so in his works apparently, and uh, so again, uh, you know, he's a question mark. If he's a decent price, I would say uh, you certainly would be wanting to play him in the second, third, or fourth tier you know, mm-hmm. spots. All right, back talk. 
I won't make it. Yeah, I'm looking at all the every time the distance has been longer, the horse has been losing losing ground. Well, he he's not even in the race. Oh, okay. Yeah. I uh, mean, I, at this point, uh, unless a, another one drops out, he's not going to make it. Okay, conveyance. You mentioned before a yeah. shot. Mm-hmm. We'll we'll have to change the running style. Yeah, he have to be able to sit a little bit right. and be effective. And this this horse has been working real well at the track. Conveyance. Uh, conveyance. Uh, yes. Especially uh, on the twenty first, a bullet work. Well, he worked today, and apparently he he he, he looked. Uh, oh, he worked today too. Yeah. Oh, he okay. Looks very good today. Right. All right. Dean's Kitchen hasn't. Uh, well, uh, ran one son. Yeah. That's a toss. Yeah, uh, toss him. Right. Um, Devil may care. You said a chance, but get a get a a good price on that one. Yeah, I, uh, you'd have to. I, You'd have to say uh, she's got a shot. I mean, otherwise she wouldn't be in the race. So. And, and that's the filly. Yeah, that's the filly. Yeah, discreetly mine another Pletcher horse, um, another horse with with some speed, but. Uh, yeah, but he, uh, he can sit a little bit. I mean, right. he, he's going to be near the front. Just, but uh, he, you throw. He, he's a toss based on the fact of uh, he was uh, not first or second start or finish in the last two, so. And I'm also looking at the at the figures, and really hasn't taken any step up from the a, no. a, a nice uh, two year old campaign, but just hasn't hasn't really yet. built on that. But, yeah, but again, Joe, none of these horses have been that outstanding. Mm-hmm. Uh, they, you know, I mean, uh, uh, when you look at the speed figures, they're all slow. <laughs> 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 there's, believe me, there's no. Barbaro or uh, a Big Brown in this in this race, or even Curlin or Street Sense. There, there, there doesn't seem to be that quality of horse here. And and, and before we get, continue along the the list of the contenders for the Kentucky Derby, I I got to give you credit where it's due. Uh, ask Andrea, who I I really like, you know, from a few races and looking at the pattern, and you know, I was really tempted to get into that first future poll. Uh, and with odds of twenty-two to one, would have been nice. I, I didn't bet it, but you always say it's a sucker, sucker okay. bet, and it unfortunately proves that way for uh, people who like that horse. Yeah, that's a sucker bet. Yeah. Uh, that uh, you know, they, I mean, the fact that they have to talk it up is <laughs> proves it's a sucker bet. <laughs> right. <laughs> right. Now, now you're you're a hundred percent Irish, and yes. well, I'm sure a lot of people are going to be at the track and be betting these Irish horses just because of the name Dublin, uh, Wayne okay. Lucas. Trainee, why, why don't you give it any chance? Uh, hasn't been re- uh, his last works there didn't look that good. Uh, he's been trying to get out. Uh, to me, the fact that uh, he didn't win the the Rebel was it the Rebel the last one? Uh, the or Arkansas the, uh, Derby. No, the Arkansas Derby. Yeah, uh, he had everything in his favor. The line of David had run quickly. Was out there by himself. Was easily easily going to uh, could be taken and wasn't uh dublin couldn't get by he's a toss okay so that makes it a little more simpler uh next we move on to uh, a horse which qualifies by you were talking first and second in in the stretch and at the finish uh, on the last two starts endorsement um who lightly raced as a a two-year-old just just one sprint didn't do anything what? He's an improving horse. There's no question that this horse is on the improve. Um, now, Shannon Ritter, new trainer, I'm sure. Yeah. To be honest, I don't know anything about her. Um, she was um, assistant to uh, uh, who had the horse before her. Um, I'm not looking at that passport. Right. The, or, the trainer on this horse. Oh, Richard Budge. Yeah, he. Uh, she was uh, uh, um, uh, assistant to him. Oh, okay. And she's been assistant to a number of people. She's got some experience. The the uh, the, the question mark on this horse is he was supposed to work Sunday mm-hmm. and didn't. Okay. He was supposed to work today, and all he did was gallop. Wow. The question now is she's saying, well, I may be, I may work him on Wednesday. And, uh, or I may not, you know. Now, that in itself doesn't mean that the horse is not 
in in good shape. But it's, you got to have a little question mark. Here you're going into the biggest race of their of the horse's life, and uh, you're not uh, you're changing the training pattern. You know. Right. So so definitely question mark. I'm even looking at possible ten to one odds. You know. I don't know. If I, I would say that, that uh, if, if the horse, if there's nothing wrong with the horse, the horse is definitely a candidate uh, to win or uh, to be uh, certainly a candidate in the first four. Okay. And, and how, how do you think you'll be able to tell if this horse is, is right or, or wrong before it hits the gate? Uh, only if I put money on him. <laughs> right. right. So <laughs> I, I, I don't think there's any way to know. <laughs> right. So that's a good one. Uh we're here at six thirty eight. Stark will be performing in the studio about eight o'clock here at WVOF. We we're talking with uh, my dad Bill Kelly, who's uh world class horse handicapper and uh first started watching horses out in Hong Kong and now makes his home in Las no. Vegas. And, uh, if I if I could tell a, a real quick little story, Joe. Yep. My uh, my first the thing that got me interested in horses was in 1953. Uh huh. I was uh, eleven and a half years old, and there was a horse called Native Dancer. Okay. Who was undefeated going into the Kentucky Derby, and. Um, it was the beginning of horse racing on TV, and, you know, it was all black and white, and this was a gray horse, and yet he st- he stood out That's on a, on a black and white TV. But this horse lost, should have won the, the Kentucky Derby. It was the only loss in his career. Wow, yeah. As probably, you know, is within the top three horses in history of the last... 20th century, as far as, and and certainly among the top uh, sire. You know, it, they say that uh, of the Kentucky Derby winners, um, any any of the grandsons of uh, raise a native, you need to be from that line to win the Kentucky Derby. Uh, well, Native Dancer was his sire. <laughs> There you go. That horse, I can tell you exactly where I was when it was. I listened on radio at eleven and a half years old up to this to this one race, and uh, you know I can't remember what I had for dinner yesterday. You know? <laughs> <laughs> but, but that horse made that much of an impression, yeah. Yeah, sure and, and your mom used to love the horses, right? Oh yeah, and and uh, that's why I was listening to the race. Oh okay, right. <laughs> So taking you back to 1953, we we were actually talking today at work about when when television came out. Uh, it must have been around that time, right? I mean, on TV when 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 it, when it became popular with uh, with uh, I mean it had been out for a long time, but it, right. when it became somewhat uh, reasonably priced, they began to show up in in uh, in people's homes. Uh, it was around that time, yes. All right. We're going to continue along the 136 Kentucky Derby running this Saturday. Always a great time, and everybody has high hopes going into it. And then they come into work or, or the next day and shaking their heads. And, you know, <laughs> <laughs> the balloon gets deflated most of the time. But it, it's a great time in the build up and actual running of the race. And uh, last year was a big surprise. And, and Giacomo, the Superfecta, paid out $880,000. Or some some around there. Some ridiculous figure. Yeah, could, this could be a year that that happens. Right, right. I mean, I, I saw a ten cent superfector, ten cent superfector, pay out over twelve thousand dollars the other day. <laughs> now, now that that's certainly some uh, some great things if you're able to hit one of those. Oh yeah. Yeah. All right, we're going to uh, continue along. Homeboy Chris, uh, Joe Tory. Oh. Joe yeah. Torrey has a bit of the ownership there. That's Good. a toss, right? He's going to lose tonight, and he'll lose in the Kentucky Derby. <laughs> oh, actually, the Met game's rained out. Oh, is it? Yeah, yeah, I forgot to tell you. Oh. Okay. Yeah, I just saw Eddie Coleman a little while ago, so. Um, so uh, Wednesday at, uh, at uh, oh, no, it doesn't start till Friday, does it, uh, Belmont? Yeah, that's right, Friday, yeah. So uh, We don't have it. It'll dry out by then. Yeah, it's, ra- it's raining today, and 
should have some nice nice weather before Belmont. Uh, Icebox trained by Nick Zito, who won the Florida Derby. Uh, didn't you know was on the wrong lead for much of the stretch. Um, what, what do you think of this still one? And still don't know where you actually won. <laughs> <laughs> That's right, just by a nose. Yeah, well, I think it was even closer than that. <laughs> right. Training well, and uh, but but you don't think this one has the goods? No, I, I uh, uh, you would you would have to. Uh, he, he's got an X because uh, his race before he wasn't yeah. in the first or second in the stretch or final, but. But I, his running style, with all the speed in it, um, who knows? I mean, he, he could be a Giacomo uh, type of horse, uh, could be on the improving side. Uh, but he's unknown. I, 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 I certainly wouldn't play him on top. I'd certainly play him thir- third or fourth uh, if I was playing uh, Super Factor. Yeah, and the, and the pace scenario in that Florida Derby looks like this horse had everything set up to his liking. Yeah, that, yeah. That, that race was a very strange ra- race. Uh, I mean, why Nakatani had propulsion on uh, on the lead with uh, with Rule? Mm-hmm. I think it was Rule, right? Yeah, right, it was yeah, Rule. Yeah, uh, is beyond me. I mean, the horse was a was a was a deep closer, and uh, all of a sudden he's you know he's going head to head on the lead. Uh, didn't make any sense to me. All right, interactive, definite toss. Well, I would toss him only from the... He's been working okay, yeah. but he's never run on dirt. Right. And and, and early starts on dirt were just... Yeah, I, I, yeah just, just a I, real early, nothing, nothing impressive, so... Yeah. I yeah. mean, the, the, it's not the type of horse that I would uh, uh, play even in the third or fourth spot. I, I don't think... Uh, I mean, he'll probably win now, but... <laughs> <laughs> Now, now, how about uh, Zito's other horse, Jackson Bend? Another uh, throwaway. Ah, uh, this horse, uh, you know, Jackson Bend and uh, and Dublin. Mm-hmm. Going back to Dublin a little bit. Underneath, you got to give Jackson Bend a, a second, third, or fourth possible finish. The horse has got all kinds of heart. Uh, the fact that he he fell behind the awesome act and. Uh, in the wood and still and came back and uh, and uh, and finished second. It, it just indicates that the horse has got some heart. So uh, I mean, as a small horse and in a big field like this, and going a mile and a quarter, uh, there's question mark. I wouldn't play him on top, but I'd certainly play him underneath. Yeah, certain has been in first or second throughout its career in every race. So. In every race, Mike yeah. Smith is going to be aboard. Uh, Burrell's going to opt to to ride on Super Saver. Another horse which which you you gave some marks to uh, positively line of David and uh, John Court won the last race but uh, Bayrano is going to be uh, taking the ride. Uh, how about this one? You know, ra- raced out your way and then went over to Oakland and and won the Arkansas Derby. Yeah, I, you know, on the you take the Illinois Derby out of the equation and just looking at his all-weather performance, you would say that he would be a, a third or fourth tier behind the California horses because uh, he's always finished behind the, all of them. I mean, mm-hmm. basically, he's never... I don't think he, in any of the major races, I don't think he uh, he won. He finished third most of the time. Is that correct? I don't have the, the PPs in front of me right now. But, right. Uh, I'm just working off of memory. Mm-hmm. Uh, but again, the horse... Uh, a horse, uh, you know, showed at least he can run on dirt. His problem is going to be he's going to be out there, and if he's not as good as uh, War Emblem, uh, he can't win. Right, right. Uh, and I don't think he's going to be on the lead alone. I, I just don't think they'll let him cruise along that way. So it's going to be. Uh, oh, I, am I am I confusing the? I may, may be confusing the race. Uh, Lina David was in the, the Arkansas Derby. Arkansas Derby, right. not the Illinois Derby. No, no, Arkansas Derby. Yeah, I, I, you were thinking of American Lion. I was thinking of American. Lion. Yeah, yeah. Lina David uh, to me is a. Uh, I would almost toss every horse out of that Arkansas Derby. I don't. I don't think any of them were, were impressive. Yeah. You know? 
And uh, uh, we, we talked about looking at Lucky. He's going to be the, the favorite, most likely. Yeah. Baffert, Gomez, powerful team. That horse has always run well. I mean, you know, the, even the losses, he, he's had excuses. I mean, in the, as a two-year-old, he was in post-13, and, you know, he just lost by a nose in that race, right? Right, yep, yeah, exactly. Uh, and then in the, uh, the heart he showed in the, uh, the Rebel, mm-hmm. where, you know, he, he got stopped cold. Uh, going in the, th- the second turn uh, and still rallied to win. My problem with him right now is they say he, he was a little stiff in the back end mm-hmm. from the all-weather track, okay. which is, a, which is a, a, a problem. Gomez uh, took too much out of him in that rebel. Mm-hmm. You know, there was no need for him. He didn't have to win that race. He didn't have to, as they say, ride the hair off him right, right. Uh, to win. He had all the money to get into the Derby, so he didn't need the money. And uh, is he the same horse now? Uh, and, uh, you know, he bounced a little bit in the, the Santa Anita Derby, even though he had a tremendous amount of trouble. And you have to give him credit for finishing third. I mean, he was really stopped dead. I, I mean, he almost went over the rail uh, and still came back in for third. So, yeah, he, he's, uh, the question marks are, is he over the top? All right, make music for me, automatic draw. Well, uh, it's a horse that's not in the race. Uh, unless somebody goes, uh, goes out, mm-hmm. uh, uh, he's not going to make it. All right, we're moving along. We got uh, about five, ten minutes left. Uh, Mission, Mission Impassable, another Pletcher, uh, Twin Creek, Creeks Racing Stable. Uh, yeah, interesting horse, uh, mm-hmm. Joe. You, you, you have the uh, PPs. I, I looked at it this morning. His last race was really a Z pattern to win. In other words, he he was up close, then dropped back, and then ran up again and, and won, um, which is a, a very interesting pattern. A very successful pattern shows a horse that's not only uh, got some heart, but also some talent. Um, this horse is, uh, uh, doesn't qualify under the uh, first or second uh, stretch and final in the last two, but is a very interesting horse and apparently has been training pretty well. Yeah, nice work uh, Saturday as well. Um, mm. You know, a minute, a minute and... Uh, a fifth and five furlongs in the slop, mm-hmm. so uh, should should be uh, ready to go. Keep him, keep that one in the mix. And yeah, I would say that that's a yeah. horse that uh, you know could very well be uh, um, Fletcher's uh, big hope. Um, also, uh, Kenny McPeak's Noble Promise. Uh, Willie Martinez is going to be on because uh, Alborada is going to be on another horse. Um, yeah, well, that horse is. Uh, you have to again. He, he was uh, finished fifth in our Arkansas Derby. Had some trouble. Right, right. Then uh, had uh, uh, his his uh, lungs were uh, had a lung infection. Mm-hmm. Now he scoped clean yesterday, apparently. But you have to, and he's not a hundred percent in the race yet. Okay. He's been working well. Right, right. Uh, certainly has heart. But if you, you know, I mean, if you like uh, looking at Lucky and this horse is sound, you have to give this horse um, a big chance because he finished uh, within uh, two lengths of looking at Lucky in, in three different races. So uh, uh, you would say if he's healthy, he certainly uh, got a shot. Uh, Patty Prado, Keith DeSormo on uh, Dale Roman's training. Uh, how mm-hmm. about this one? Uh, obviously, uh, uh, working well. Speeds of uh, you know, he's, he's kind of a a, a uh, like a big brown horse. Mm-hmm. Meaning, uh, he, uh, he he's really come on late uh, in his third, uh, you know, his three year uh, career, his three year old career. Uh, his question mark is uh, is is the dirt. Uh, his only dirt try was horrendous, his first race. But you could almost throw that out. Uh, he's one that uh, has, no question, has the talent uh, and can get the distance. 
whether he can, uh, he's got enough experience to handle all the horses he's going to have to uh, go with. Uh, he's got decent running style from a standpoint. He's be able to sit right off the the speed, being the you know the second tier of horses uh, to make a big move. You know, and a lot. You also have to look at the. Uh, the draw uh, will have an effect on these horses, you know. Mm-hmm. So, uh, but he's one I would keep in the mix. Uh, next, we move on to uh, well, we talked about Sydney's candy at length. Um, yeah. Stately Victor, who won that race, uh, the Bluegrass, you talked mm-hmm. about, will be coming from from uh, way out from of behind. It. Um, how about this one? Um. I, 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 he's, he's another, you know, dirt question mark. His dirt races were horrendous. Right, right. Um, I, I, um, I don't, uh, made, made a change by taking off the blinkers and, you know, has, mm. well, I guess the peak was that stately. If yeah. they strap yeah. rockets on him, uh, he'd, he'd be a bet. <laughs> All right. So <laughs> not exactly looking, <laughs> don't bet the house on that one. No, uh, I, right. <laughs> Uh, I would say he's a question mark, and uh, you know, again, uh, you know, because of his running style, I would say uh, uh, a definite, thir- you know, a clunker to come up in the in the third and fourth spots. Um, super saver, uh, never doubt Calvin Burrell. He's worked the magic on on mm. Street Sense and Mind That Bird. Another uh, Todd Pletcher horse mm. in in there. So a uh, reasonable shot, right? I would say uh, certainly has the the the. Uh, quality to, to get in there uh, again his running style is uh, because he's need to lead you know and he's he's not one that's going to be able to rate so uh, he and uh, line of david uh, will certainly be going head to head all right we've been uh, having a great time and, and listening to the preview to the 136 running of the kentucky derby and churchill downs um and uh we hope that uh, you got some insight from that and put it all together, and there's. I'm more confused than I was when I started. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you talked me on a couple. You talked me off a couple. I made some marks all over this paper, so. <laughs> but it's all it's it's all a good time. Yes. And um, you know, before we before we we let you go, we're gonna let's say if you can give us for the wind spot four horses that uh, you think. Be up there for the win spot, and, and out of out of those four, who do you think will be uh, overlays that might be worth uh, putting down some hard-earned money on? Okay, <laughs> um, I'm gonna. I'm, my favorite horse right now would be the one at, uh, at the, a reasonable price would be Sydney's Candy. I, I think the horse is bred to run the mile and a quarter and to go all day. Okay. His running style is, uh, I don't think he needs, absolutely has to have the, the lead. He'll be up close, and I think he, there's no question the horse will get a mile and a quarter. And what would be a, a reasonable odds? Well, I, 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 anything, I said six to one or higher before. I would say five to one or higher. Is, if he's five to one, I would consider uh, putting a, a, a bet on him. All right, Sydney's candy. Uh, how about... How about a th- second horse? You know, give give us three more for the win spot and possible odds you'd accept on them. Okay, um, I would say that uh, the the horses that uh, I would say Patio Prado, if uh, he's double digit odds, uh, would be a, a certain you know a, a decent candidate that, uh, uh, despite his name, uh, right. would be uh, uh, a horse that I think could win. All right. Um, the, uh, uh, the other horse that, uh, I would, uh, is of the Baffert horses, I think conveyance is the one that's going to be, uh, again, uh, long odds has to be long odds. I mean, the horse, right. uh, and, um, uh, if he doesn't win could possibly hang on for a piece. Okay. You know? so, so somewhere in there. Right. And then the other question mark uh, would be uh, endorsement. Okay. Uh, on as a win candidate. Right. And underneath the horses that I would keep uh, in you know for 
for the uh, second, third, and fourth, you would have to say Jackson Ben. Mm-hmm. Awesome Act. Um, Dublin for third and fourth. Icebox for third and fourth. And um, Stately, uh, Stately Victor for fourth. All right. There you go. There's your superfectus right there. That's it. That's Man, it. I'm, gonna go, I'm going to the window right now. <laughs> <laughs> it. There's your uh, horse stimulus tips for the Kentucky Derby from Bill Kelly. Right. Joe, it's been a great time. I really yeah. enjoy it. Oh, yeah. We'll definitely uh, we'll have to do this again in a couple weeks to uh, right. re- recap the Derby and, and look forward to... Uh, Hopefully I'm not in China. <laughs> you have to call China. <laughs> Oh, that's right. You're going to be out there uh, scouting some horses out in China. Yeah. You're well, going to be at the expo, right? Mm-hmm. Yes, gonna... I'll be at the expo. Okay, so that, that should be nice. I know. No, Connor... I mean, if, if, it, uh, if, uh, if I'm out there, I'll give you a call. <laughs> yeah, Con- Connor's going, going out there, right? Yeah, Connor and Kevin, yeah. yeah. Oh, okay, so they're looking forward to that. Oh, of course. Yeah. 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 I, I think I... Sean's going to be going to us, so. Oh, okay. Now, now out of the, the three of you guys, who speaks the best Mandarin Chinese? Uh, Connor, uh, Connor is fluent. Oh, really? Okay. Yeah, I mean, he can, he can, uh, he can switch from one language to another, and, and you know, back and forth without stopping. Kevin under, understands uh, Chinese, uh, uh, but uh, is more hesitant to speak. Mm-hmm. Not because he can't, but he just uh, is more hes- hesitant. Yeah. So say hi to both of them. Say hi to Andrea, and uh, I sure will. And you say hello to G for me. Yeah. Definitely. So we've really enjoyed it. My dad, yep. Bill Kelly, graduate of Fairfield University. Class I have of fun night. with the band. Are you singing with them? Uh, no, no, no. I'm, I'm just manning <laughs> the controls, and, and, you know, they're just going to come in, th- three musicians, and just blast the, the uh, plexiglass off this place. Great. Yeah. Great. <laughs> so, uh, I, I've sang, you know, I've sang with bands before once in a while, but... Have uh, you really? Uh, well, you know, not, not seriously, you know, maybe a couple lines, but... <laughs> But I'll, really? I'll, I'll just be uh, I'll just be listening to the music and uh, handicapping while while they play. Absolutely. Right. If I hear anything, I'll, I'll uh, anything further, I'll forward it on to you. All right. This is WVOF eighty-eight point five FM in Fairfield, Connecticut. We're going to listen to some music right now. Thanks, Dad. <laughs> 